What's going on guys? Today we're going to take a look at ZSH. ZSH is a shell. It actually stands for Z shell and it's similar to Bash, the born again shell, which is still the default shell on most Linux distributions. And Z shell is actually the new default shell on the Mac OS. It used to be Bash, but they switched to ZSH. So if you're a Mac user that actually uses your shell, then you're already using Z shell. So let's take a look at it today, see if I end up agreeing with Apple on this shell or not. I mean, they're a trillion dollar company, so you would think in theory, if they're changing their shell after all this years, that they're actually doing it for a good reason. And if you look around on the internet, it seems to be a general consensus that ZSH is better than Bash. So to install ZSH, if you're on Gen 2, you can just emerge ZSH. Um, the package name is ZSH. So if you're on a different distribution like Linux Mint or um, Arch Linux, just use your package manager, but install ZSH should be the same package name. Uh, speaking of Gen 2, there's actually a bunch of use flags that we can set on ZSH, quite a few more than we have available on Bash. Now, personally, I haven't set any of these use flags yet. I haven't had an opportunity to mess with them. But if you have, let me know in the comments down below how that went, what use flags you were able to set or unset to kind of optimize your ZSH setup. Because Obviously, if you're a Gen 2 user, you know we're going to want to mess with our use flags. That's kind of the whole point of uh, Gen 2. Now, after you've installed ZSH, you can go ahead and launch it with the ZSH command. This will change your prompt from a bash prompt to a Z shell prompt. And when you launch it for the first time after installing it on your system, you're going to be given this Z shell configuration function, uh, which is kind of cool. It basically helps you with setting up your ZSH RC because Z shell uses an RC file for its configuration, just like bash and just like Vim. But this will guide us through setting that up, which is pretty cool for noobs. And I'm a Z shell noob, so let's try it out. So let's uh, continue to the main menu. And let's configure settings for history. And I want to change the number of lines that'll save to my hist file. So this is basically just a file that stores a history of commands that you've used. Let's change that to 5000. Why not? And let's go ahead and remember those edits. And let's pick some more common shell options. Um. Let's see, do I want to change anything here? Oh yeah, I definitely want to change beep on errors. I don't want to hear a bunch of beeps. Let's unset that and let's remember the settings. And uh, let's see, how do I save it? Okay, zero to exit saving the settings. Now, you may be wondering, why does my PS1 look so jacked up? Well, this is because ZSH is trying to take the PS1 definition from Bash, because if you remember from one of the videos I did on Bash scripting, PS1 is a global variable that can be defined in a file. So if I look at my Bash RC, this is where it's defined uh, up here. And this syntax works for Bash, but it does not work for ZSH. ZSH uses a different syntax. And um, because the only place that that PS1 has been defined is in Bash, Z poor Z shell is trying to read it and it's just having a hard time. So if I want to change it, I could just say PS1 uh, equals mental outlaw. And that'll change my PS1 variable to something that looks a little bit better. The LS colors do follow the same syntax though. So if I LS right now, everything is just white because I haven't set them. But what I could do is open up my bash RC and let me also open up my um, Z shell RC. And I should just be able to literally copy these three lines and just paste them at the end here. And uh, I got to restart my shell. So let's let's just exit 
ZSH, PS1 gets jacked up again, but now my LS colors are actually working. And that's a pretty big deal for me because the LS colors, so it just makes different file types be a different color, but it allows you to recognize what type of file you're looking at a little bit faster, assuming that you can keep track of the colors in your brain because the human mind is able to process colors a whole lot faster than it can process file extensions. I mean, we've been processing colors for hundreds of thousands of years. We've only been processing file extensions for the last few decades. Now, ZSH does have a lot of other features available in it, which is kind of the reason why I was hesitant to install it and try it out at first, because honestly, I'm not even using most of the features that Bash has to offer. I mean, if we take a look at my Bash RC again, uh, you can see that all I've really set up so far is, um, uh, where did I have it? Oh, no, I actually removed that because I wasn't using it. Um, all I've really got defined is my LS colors. Um, I've got my PS1 set up. I've got Vim mode set up, which basically allows you to edit really long, obnoxious uh, commands in a Vim-like manner so that you don't have to like hold down the backspace to go all the way back. So we'll see how ZSH fares because from what I've seen in my research with it, a lot of um, a lot of the new features added in ZSH seem to be like eye candy and things that just make your shell look nice, but that kind of goes against the philosophy I've developed around this minimalist Gentoo system. I mean, I worked pretty hard to get it to idle at less than 100 megs of RAM. I really don't think I'm gonna start beautifying this system and you know bloating it up. I don't even have a wallpaper installed on here. So that goes to show you how much I care about the eye candy. Um, so let's go ahead and just quit out of this right now. I do actually have a proper Z shell configuration that I've set up. Um, I, I haven't really put a lot into it, but I have put in a couple of the new things that Z Shell has to offer. So let me just get rid of ZSHRC and then move Zoomer Shell to .CSHRC and exit out of this, start it again. Yay, now my PS1 looks proper. So let's do a bit of a comparison between Bash RC and this new CSHRC. So, of course, you can see my PS1 defined up here. This is how you do it in Z Shell. And it's actually a shorter syntax than we have in Bash RC. So that's kind of cool. LS colors, that stuff's the same. Hist file size, that's the same. Uh, this is how you enable VI mode, which, for those of you who don't know what VI mode is, is uh, let's do ZSH as well, so we're using the proper shell. So say you have a very long, obnoxious command like this, all right, in order to, say, clear the text from the screen, if you don't have VI mode, you have to hold down the backspace, and that's pretty garbage, it takes a long time. But you can just hit escape, and now you basically are in a Vim prompt. So if I wanted to just delete this whole thing, I could just DD it, and then it's gone. Pretty cool, it's really good if you ever have to edit a really long, obnoxious command. Um, so this is an extra feature I've added. I actually don't know if this is available in Bash. I just saw um, that it was available in ZSH. So what this does is it actually will change uh, the way that my prompt looks depending on whether I'm in insert mode or if I'm in, um, normal mode, it'll actually change this cursor here. So it'll be a block if I'm in escape. I mean, if I'm in normal mode, I think the same way that Vim does it by default, and then it'll be a line if I'm in insert mode. So that can be kind of useful. I mean, I don't generally have trouble with keeping up what mode I'm in in my shell. I don't ever really... I've never been in a situation where I've been editing a long command in my shell and then I've had to leave my computer for some reason and then come back and not remember where I'm at, but we'll see whether or not I end up keeping that feature. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, okay, so the auto tab complete and the complete menu down here. So this is something that might actually be kind of cool. So in Bash, you know that we have a uh, command completion, right? So if you're typing something like an LS, you can hit tab and it'll give you options for how to complete that command. But in Z shell, you can hit tab again and it'll actually bring you into this menu where you can actually select how you want to uh, finish the command. In bash, what you would typically have to do is start typing out the name of one of these strings, but Z shell will actually let you select the string directly. And I patched vim keys into it as well. So that's what this stuff down here is because by default, you have to do, um, I think it's the arrow keys. Yeah, by default it's arrow keys, but obviously that's garbage, arrow keys suck. We like vim keys so much better. So that's a pretty cool feature of it. Um, and then you just hit enter and then it lets you select that string and then you can just continue with LSing whatever folder you wanted to LS. Um, another feature that is, I, well, this isn't unique to Z shell. There's some other shells that have this, but they're like bloated awful shells is um, syntax highlighting. So that's what is going on here. Why it looks all cool when I'm typing out is because I enabled the syntax highlighting in Z shell. And that's with this down here. Actually, let me show you the full way for how to do this. So this is the... Uh, this is the GitHub for the syntax highlighting because you have to either, if you're on any distro or just about any other distro other than Gentoo, you can probably just install this from your package manager. But like if I go to the install MD here, it basically gives you a breakdown. So if you're on void Linux, you can just get it through XBPS. If you're on Arch Linux, you can just get it from the AUR. Uh, but if you're on Gen 2, they want you to use this MV overlay, which is just a lot of nonsense that I'm not looking to do for one feature in one package, right? So here's a way that you can do that in a way that just doesn't suck. So um, follow, uh, thought they had the, okay, here it is. So basically just follow these instructions for how to do it. That's exactly what I did on my system. So go into whatever folder you want to have your, um, this uh, GitHub package in, and then just add this line at the bottom, but make sure that it's the same path to where you have your folder in. So mine is inside of my home folder inside of the config folder. And then I have this folder that I added from GitHub. And that has to be at the bottom of your ZSHRC file in order for the syntax highlighting to work. Um, you know, it's it looks kind of nice, but I'm gonna have to just use it for a little while to see if it's actually for me or not. So let's, uh, let's close out of everything. And let's actually quit out of X just to clear our RAM usage and get to a base level. So now it's time for ZSH to stand trial. We're going to see whether or not it is bloated compared to Bash. We're going to do some footprinting of our resource usage with ZSH and with Bash. All right, let's start X again and see if my bar loads correctly. Hey, it did. It's always nice when it loads correctly. So we'll start URXVT. Right now I'm using bash. So let's open up HTOP and just kind of get a base resource usage. Okay, so it looks like we're using around, uh, I'm gonna call that 51 megs. Yeah, no need to round it up past that. So we're using about 51 megs with a single bash prompt. And then let's go over here and do, another URXVT and let's spawn 10 more of them. So URXVT, 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 URXVT. Uh, how many we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need two more. 
All right, so we've got 10 over here, one over here for a total of 11. Um, and this is, as you can see, this is creating new bash prompts, right? This isn't just creating URXVT because URXVT is the terminal emulator, bash is the shell. So when we have 10 um, bash shells open in URXVT, our RAM usage is 110 megs. So let's now quit out of X again so that our RAM is cleared. And let's set Z shell as the new default shell. Now, in order to do that, you need to use the command chsh s bin zsh. So now uh, Z shell is going to be what the, the default shell is. In fact, I think I could probably, uh, let me see, should I exit this? Okay, so this should also make it, um, my login should also be ZSH as well. And let's see, yep, so you see I have my syntax highlighting there. We shouldn't be using bash at all. Let's start X. And the bar loaded again, how about that? Usually it messes up when I have to close it and restart it a bunch. So we'll start a single URXVT. Let's open up HTOP. And we're using 52, 53 megs of RAM. Okay, that's not bad. That's only a two meg difference and I'm not really nitpicky enough to hold that against ZSH. That's actually pretty decent. So let's start up a bunch more URXVTs now. All right, let's make sure this is fair now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we have 11 open up again, and now we're using 125 megs of RAM. So I think uh, Z shell may have some scaling issues to it. That's about, actually no, no, because we had 110 last time, right? So. We're using about, uh, let's see, can I do some quick maths in my head? We're using about 1.5 megs of RAM more for a Z shell compared to a Bash shell. So, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Z shell a chance. I'm gonna actually use this as my main shell. I'm going to leave. Um, the configuration that I just did to make ZSH my main shell, and we'll see how I feel about it. 1.5 megs of RAM isn't really that big of a deal to me. I, I'm willing to sacrifice that much RAM in order to, I don't know, get some get some new features just in case it's it's actually going to be useful to me. But ZSH better watch its back because next shell that I'm gonna try out is Dash, and Dash is well known for being a very fast, very minimalist shell, and I've got a feeling that it's just gonna blow both of these out of the water. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Have you tried ZSH? Are you happy with it? What type of features should I patch into ZSH that's going to really make me love it and cherish it? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you learned something from the video. If you did, be sure to share it, leave a like. Peace out, guys.